Hey guys, it's Adrian here, the Canadian in a t-shirt. And today I'll be breaking down the basics of dividends and I'll explain everything you need to know about dividend investing. I'll go over the dividend yield, what the ex-dividend date means, the importance of the payout ratio, and my overall dividend strategy. This is chapter seven of my millennial investing guide. So click the pop-up at the top right, to check out the previous videos in this playlist to learn more about the basics of investing, what are stocks, bonds, ETFs, mutual funds, and how to invest during a market crash. In this video, I'm going to assume that you understand the basics of the stock market. If you're a little rusty, make sure you've watched my previous video, The Stock Market Explained, where I also go over the difference between capital gains and dividends. So click the pop-up at the top right to check out that video first and then come back to this one. As a quick recap, when you own a stock, you own a small piece of that company. Even if you only own one single share, you own a part of that company. And so you are entitled to a small portion of their profits. Stocks can earn you money in two ways, capital gains and dividends. Capital gains are simple. If you sell the stock for a higher price than you bought it for, you've made a profit. And that profit is called a capital gain. Every single stock can earn you capital gains, as long as you buy low and sell high. But certain stocks can earn you money an additional way, through dividends. Dividends are a percentage of a company's profits that they pay out to investors like you. And you don't have to do anything to earn this money. You don't have to sell your stock or put in any work or go to a meeting. As long as you own at least one share of that company, you will receive a dividend. But the more shares you own, the more money you'll receive in dividends. They are a great source of passive income. Dividends are an incentive to encourage investors to invest for the long term because they are paying you throughout the year. With capital gains, you only make money once, the moment you decide to sell your stock. But with dividends, you get paid many times, every three months or even every month. But not every company pays out dividends. Newer companies or companies in the tech sector like Tesla or Amazon are called growth stocks and growth stocks do not pay dividends. The only way to make money with a growth stock is to sell it for a higher price than you bought it for. Dividend stocks are usually more established companies called blue chip stocks, which have consistent and reliable income and they share this income with their investors through dividends. I'll be making a whole video comparing growth stocks and dividend stocks, but I wanna quickly make the case for why dividend stocks are important and why you should care about them, especially during a market crash. With dividend stocks, you earn money in two ways. You earn capital gains when you sell the stock at a profit, but you also earn dividends every step along the way. With growth stocks, there's only one way to earn money, and that's when you actually sell. Until you sell, the stock isn't doing anything for you. I'm not saying avoid growth stocks. It's important to diversify, and I invest in both growth stocks and dividend stocks. But here's an example to showcase how dividends can help you earn money even during a market crash. Let's look at a growth stock like Facebook over the past five years. At the worst point during this 2020 crash in mid-March, Facebook stock was worth $150 per share. Facebook stock was worth the exact same amount three years ago in April 2017. Since this is a growth stock, these three years were wasted. You didn't earn anything during these three years. If you bought Facebook stock three years ago, it would have been the exact same thing as if you bought the stock this year in March. You weren't rewarded at all for holding the stock over that time. Three years later, you ended up at the exact same point. So that time was wasted. Let's compare this with a dividend stock like TD. Again, the low point during the 2020 crash was in mid-March. The last time TD stock had a share price that low was in February 2016, four years ago. However, these four years were not wasted because you earn dividends every three months during these past four years. Sure, after four years, the stock price returned to the exact same point, so you didn't earn any capital gains during this time, but you earned a consistent dividend of 4% every single year just by holding onto the stock. This is one of the reasons I love dividends. I am always being rewarded for my time in the market and my money is always working for me. So that's an overview of why I love dividends so much. Let's talk about the fundamentals, starting with the dividend frequency. Dividends are a source of passive income that you earn just by holding onto your stock. They're basically a paycheck that the company pays out to you as an investor. You can receive these dividends every year, every quarter, or even every month. The majority of companies pay out their dividends every quarter. So you'll receive a paycheck from the company every three months, so four paychecks per year. Some companies, especially REITs, real estate investment trusts, pay out their dividends every single month. That's because these REITs make their income by collecting rent on their properties. And so as an investor, you receive a portion of that monthly rent through dividends. The frequency of the dividend doesn't really matter. Sure, it's nice to receive monthly income, but don't make this your deciding factor. Don't invest in a company just because they pay a monthly dividend. 
most of the strongest and most reliable stocks out there actually pay a quarterly dividend. But I get this question all the time. So if you want to find out if a company pays out a monthly or quarterly dividend, here's what you do. Go to a stock analysis website like Yahoo Finance and look up the stock, let's say TD. Click on chart and at the bottom, you will see icons every time they had a dividend. Here you can see that TD pays out its dividend every three months, so quarterly. If you want to see these dividends as a list, click on historical data, show dividends, and you'll see all of the most recent quarterly dividends. All of the dates you see here are actually the ex-dividend dates, which I'll go over later in this video. Let's compare this to a monthly dividend like Pembina Pipeline, ticker symbol PPL and you'll see that they pay out a dividend every single month. Now let's talk about how much money you earn from dividends. Every single share you own in a company will pay you the exact same dividend amount. This is called the dividend per share. It doesn't matter when you bought the share, all that matters is that you own it. So how do I find this number? If I'm on Questrade and I look up the TD stock, the dividend per share is on the bottom left corner. I can see that every single share I own in TD will pay me a dividend of 79 cents every quarter. If it's a monthly dividend like Pembina, this amount will tell you how much money I earn every month. In the case of TD, every single share I own will pay me 79 cents every quarter. If I own 100 shares, I'll get paid $79 every three months. It doesn't matter when I bought the shares or how much I bought them for. Every single share pays out the same amount. I could have bought these shares 50 years ago, or I could have bought these shares today. I would receive the same amount in the next dividend payment. This dividend amount of 79 cents per share is pretty consistent, at least over the course of a year. Dividends are usually only increased or decreased once per year, and that's a good thing. If I own 100 shares, I can rely on that passive income of $79 every three months until they decide to change it. If a company is doing well and growing their profits, they can crank up their dividend to keep investors happy. But if times get tough and profits drop, they might decrease the dividend amount. And if something catastrophic happens, like an economic crisis, companies might decide to cut their dividend entirely. This is only done as a last resort, and companies try their hardest to avoid suspending their dividend, since it will significantly hurt investor confidence and their stock value will plummet. I'll talk more about the warning signs of a dividend cut later in the video, but the point is that the dividend per share is pretty consistent. So how do we actually compare dividends from different companies? If we look at Pembina Pipeline stock, we see that they have a dividend per share of only 21 cents. You might be thinking, wow, they have a way smaller dividend than TD's 79 cents per share, but you'd actually be wrong. You can't just look at the dividends per share to compare companies. For one, TD pays out its dividend every three months, whereas Pembina pays out a smaller dividend, but they pay it out every single month. Okay, so let's compare apples to apples. Let's look at how much each stock pays out in dividends over the course of a whole year. TD pays out 79 cents per quarter. There are four quarters in a year. So a single share of TD pays out $3.16 in dividends every single year. Pembina pays out 21 cents per month. There are 12 months in a year. So Pembina pays out $2.52 every year. These two numbers are closer, but it still looks like TD pays out a higher dividend. It's true, one share of TD pays out more in dividends than one share of Pembina, but TD also costs a lot more to buy. If you had $1,000 to invest, you could buy almost twice as many shares of Pembina as you could with TD. So in total, your $1,000 investment in Pembina would earn you more dividend income than $1,000 in TD. These calculations we did to compare these two stocks can be summarized with one number, the dividend yield. The dividend yield is a percentage by taking the annual dividend amount per share divided by the current share price. In the case of TD, our annual dividend per share we found was $3.16, and the current share price of TD is $61.57. So if we take 3.16 divided by 61.57, we get a dividend yield of 5.1%. If you don't want to calculate this number yourself, you'll see this dividend yield anywhere you look up a dividend stock. On Questrade, if you look up TD stock, you'll see the dividend yield towards the bottom left. You'll see the 5.1% under the yield heading. The actual dividend amount you receive every quarter is in the bottom left, the 79 cents under the div heading. The dividend yield basically means that if you invest $1,000 today, you'll expect to receive 5.1% of that, or $51, every year in dividends. Let's do some quick math to confirm that. Each share costs $61.57, so if I have $1,000, I can afford 16.2 shares. You can't own a fraction of a share, so we have to round down to 16 shares of TD. 
Each share pays out 79 cents per quarter, so my 16 shares give me $12.64 every three months. There are four quarters in a year, so I would get an annual dividend total of $50.56, so pretty much $51. I just lose a bit of change since I can't own a fraction of a share. So the dividend yield tells you how much money you would receive in passive income if you invest at this very moment. I stress the at this very moment part because the dividend yield fluctuates all the time. It is not consistent. Remember in the calculation, the dividend yield depends on the share price and the share price of every stock changes every minute of every day. But the actual dividend amount per share is constant. Remember, the dividend per share doesn't change over the course of a year until they decide to increase or decrease the dividend. But the price of a stock constantly goes up and down over the course of a day. If the stock price goes up, the dividend amount doesn't change, but now you can afford to buy a fewer number of stocks and so the yield decreases. Likewise, if the stock price drops, you can now afford to buy more shares and each share still pays the same dividend and so the yield increases. That's what you're seeing right now due to the market crash. Most stocks like TD have significantly dropped in value since March of 2020. So TD's share price has dropped, but its dividend amount remains the same and so its dividend yield has increased way beyond normal. In normal times, TD had a dividend yield of around 4%. Now it has a much higher yield above 5%. And back in March, at its lowest point, TD had an even higher yield, well over 6%. Once its stock price returns to normal, its dividend yield will also return to its normal 4% range. But until then, this is a great opportunity to buy this quality stock at an unusually high yield. Check out my past video on some of the best Canadian dividend stocks to buy at a discount during this market crash. Now here is a common mistake. Don't get super excited by a stock just because it has a very high dividend yield. The dividend yield does not tell you the full story, so don't go chasing double digit yields of 15% or 20%. Those dividends are too good to be true and they will not last. If a stock has a 20% yield, that means that you'll be making $200 a year off of a $1,000 investment. That sounds awesome and it's true, you will, but that's assuming that the company can sustain that massive 20% dividend. No company can support a 20% dividend for long, and I don't know when, but eventually, after a few months, or even after a year, that company will either reduce its dividend, or even worse, it'll cut its dividend entirely, and then you'll have zero income. My rule of thumb is that any dividend yield greater than 7% is a red flag and probably not sustainable. Don't get greedy. Consistent and reliable dividends between 3 and 6% are far better and far safer. Again, due to this market crash, most stocks have dropped in value. And because of that, some dividends, which normally would be in the safe zone between 3 and 6%, have now been pushed beyond 7%. Those dividends are probably still safe. So this rule isn't black and white. It's just a general rule of thumb that I follow. Another warning, just because a dividend yield is less than 7% does not mean that it's safe. You have to look at a bunch of factors like its amount of cash versus its debt. But one of the most important factors that I look for is its payout ratio. I've talked about the payout ratio in every single stock pick recommendation video that I've done in the past. It's that important. The payout ratio tells you how much of a company's net income goes out as dividends. You can find the payout ratio of any stock on websites like Yahoo Finance. Search the stock like TD for example, click statistics, and scroll down to see that TD has a payout ratio of about 53%. That means that TD pays out 53% of its net income out to investors through dividends, leaving it with 47% of its profits to invest in itself and grow as a company. Ideally, you want a low payout ratio. Anything below 80% is usually good. Since TD has such a low payout ratio, that means that they can sustain their current dividend, and maybe they can even afford to increase their dividend very soon. Companies I warned you about with a dividend yield greater than 10% almost always have a payout ratio above 100%. That means that they are giving away more money in dividends than they are bringing in. And so they are bleeding themselves dry just to keep their investors happy. If a company has a large payout ratio for a month or two, they'll probably be all right. It could just mean that their profits have been down in the short term. But if a company consistently has a payout ratio above 100% year after year, their dividend is far too high. And it's just a matter of time before that company decides to cut its dividend. And that's what you want to avoid. Instead, you want to look for a company with stable dividends, or better yet, look for companies with a history of increasing their dividends. The last thing I want to talk about is important dates. This is a question that I get all the time. Questrade said that my dividend would be today, but I haven't got any money. What's going on? 
The date you see on Questrade when you look up a stock is called the ex-dividend date. This is not the dividend payment date. The ex-dividend date determines who is eligible to receive the dividend, and the dividend is usually paid out a few weeks later. Looking on Questrade, we can see that TD has an ex-dividend date of July 9th. That means that anyone who owned TD stock before the ex-dividend date, July 9th, will receive a dividend. If you bought TD stock on July 9th or after, you will not receive a dividend this quarter. You'll have to wait until next quarter. You can't just swoop in at the last minute, buy some stocks today, and expect to receive a dividend tomorrow. It takes a while to process and to make sure that the millions of investors out there all get their portion of the profits. In the case of TD, their next dividend will actually be paid out on July 31st. And if you want to qualify for that dividend, you'll need to buy TD shares before July 9th, the ex-dividend date. Here's the cool thing. Once the ex-dividend date passes, you will get that dividend no matter what. Let's say on July 9th, the ex-dividend date, I decide to sell all of my TD stock. At that point, I am no longer an investor in TD, but I'm already locked in. And so on July 31st, the dividend payment date, I will receive my dividends in cash, even though I no longer own any shares in TD. This is a good thing, because if this wasn't the case, then no one would ever sell their shares after the ex-dividend date, because they wouldn't want to miss out on those dividends. And if no one will sell their shares, then no one can buy shares for weeks at a time, and that would be a huge problem. The very last thing I want to mention is what to do with dividends. You receive your dividends as cash, and you can use that cash to spend or pay down your mortgage or even save it. But the best thing to do with your dividend is to reinvest it using a drip. A drip is a dividend reinvestment plan. Instead of receiving your dividend as cash, you can use your dividend to automatically purchase an extra share of that company free of charge. This allows your dividends to grow exponentially and totally on autopilot. You can just sit back and watch your investments compound and grow year after year. I made a whole video on drips and the benefits that they offer, so make sure you click the pop-up at the top right to check out that video. It's a great way to build off of what you just learned here. And if you'd like to get started with Questrade, which is my favorite online broker, click my referral link in the box below and you'll get $50 in commission-free trade rebates for the first 30 days when you sign up. That basically means that your first 10 stock trades will be commission-free. That saves you $50, plus I'll get a small referral bonus as well. So there you have it. That's everything you need to know about dividends. They're a great way to earn passive income even during a market crash. Dividends are paid out annually, quarterly, or monthly. The dividend amount per share is usually constant over the year, but the dividend yield fluctuates with the stock price. If the stock price goes up, the dividend yield goes down. Don't blindly chase stocks with high dividend yields. Make sure that they are sustainable by looking for low payout ratios. If you want to receive the next dividend, you'll have to buy stocks before the ex-dividend date. And if you want to get the most out of your dividends, reinvest them using a drip to get true exponential growth out of your investment. Thanks for watching, guys. And be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Every thumbs up and comment really does help me build this channel on YouTube. And hit that bell icon to be notified of my new videos every week. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram or Facebook, at Canadian T-shirt, click the link in the box below or click the links on my homepage. And be sure to tune into my next video on the best U.S. dividend stocks in 2020. Thanks, everyone. And I'll see you guys on the next episode of the Canadian in a T-shirt. Bye, guys.